here. Hello, I'm Claire, and my question is Hi, Claire. Um, in regards to transgender. I have an older sibling, actually, who is transgender, and my question is just how to approach that biblically, um, it, specifically in regards to what pronouns to use, um, and just in general. Yeah, Claire, bless your heart for asking that. Simply stated, there is no such thing as transgender. You're either XX or XY. That's mm -hmm. it. God made man male and female. That is determined genetically. That is physiology. That is science. That is reality. This notion that you are something other than your biology is a cultural construct intended as an assault on God. Now, your sibling may not see it that way, but that's what it's all about. And as more than anything, in fact, I was reading an article by R.C. Sproul just yesterday in which he said that the greatest revolution in American history was neither the American Revolution or the Industrial Revolution. It is the sexual revolution. This, is, this has become the most far-reaching, damaging of all revolutions that's ever occurred in this country or any other. The, the, the problem with buying into this is it is a kind of personal suicide. It is literally the end of your existence in the way that God designed you. Um, I've said this a few weeks ago, a person who is in the transgender world is 19 times more likely to kill himself or herself because you have completely cut yourself off from reality and from normal relationships. This is the end of your identity. This is the end of your ability to have a marriage that is a real marriage. It's the end of your ability to have a family. It's the end of your ability to connect and to be a part of a society and a culture and have a future and belong. It is a kind of, it is a kind of extreme isolation that can be no more extreme. You can't get more extreme than saying, I am not who I actually am because that becomes an utterly imperceptible identity. You literally have disconnected yourself from existence. You aren't who you are. You are some fantasy person in your own mind. Look, this is going to continue to escalate because we live in a world where people are told to construct whatever they want themselves to be. This is what the Internet does to people. It allows you to to create yourself the way you want to create yourself. You can access whatever is out there and you can create your own world, your own reality, and you can live in that world. The isolation of this particular aspect of it is so sad and so tragic. I read the other day a surgery was done in Australia on a five-year-old to do a sex change. These kinds of parents ought to be imprisoned who would lead a five-year-old, and what kind of doctor would ever do that in a hospital in Australia? This is a kind of scarring for life. So I, I, don't, I don't mean by being so firm that, that you want to be l lacking in love when you communicate this, but I think the only way you can address it honestly is to say, God made you. And God made you exactly the way He wanted you to be. You're not only fighting God in His physical creation, you are even more importantly fighting God in His sovereignty. You are fighting God in His spiritual relationship to you. This is a war on God. I'm not going to let God tell me who I am. I'm not going to let God define me. I'm going to be my own God. I'm going to define myself. And you're in, a, you're in Romans 1, and that's a reprobate mind. That's a mind that doesn't even function. So while saying that with firmness so you understand it, I think this has to be dealt with with love and compassion because there's some, some holes in the heart of someone going in that direction. There, there's a, a lack of 
being loved and accepted and feeling wanted and needed and significant. So on the one hand, the reality of that lie and deception is so damaging, so destructive, so isolating, so corrupting that it needs to be confronted. But on the other hand, that confrontation can't exaggerate what already exists, which is a sense of feeling isolated in relationships. So you've got to find the fine line between confronting the error of it to protect the person and at the same time providing the love and affirmation that that person needs to be all that God would have that person be. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.